Animals are very significant with the roles that they have for us in life. A major function that they serve is providing us with meat in order to make our food. But did you know that animals are mistreated in factories and in the food industry as a whole just so we can have that food? People are always kept in the dark about the cruelty that animals go through on a daily basis. So much so that there are actually young people that did not know our food's true origins. According to Contemporary Justice Review, a poll of 2,000 people showed that 36% of 16 to 23 year old people did not know that bacon comes from pigs and that 40% did not know that milk came from cows. Strangely enough, they instead thought that wheat was its source, meaning that we are always kept from knowing the truth of how our food is made. Because of this, many people go uninformed about the horrible things that happen to animals in order to produce our food. The artist of my artwork, Sue Ko, has dedicated her life to exposing all of these practices, not by being directly vocal, but conveying it through her own graphic art to get her messages across to the public, such as with this piece, There Is No Escape, as well as other artworks in Porkopolis, the series that my chosen artwork is from. According to EarthIsland.org, Sue Ko had actually grown up living right next to a slaughterhouse in Tamworth, England, hearing the pain cries of animals being prepped for food throughout multiple nights, which she recalled many other people just simply ignoring, showing that these types of food practices this bad are common in some countries such as the US and England, and that its people are growing all the more used to them. She also remembers seeing two World War II memorials in her hometown along with the slaughterhouse, so she went on to form a connection between them and compare the tortured animals to Holocaust victims. With this, she believes that our cruel actions against animals shows a link between our abusive primal nature towards each other and the natural world itself. It is further shown in Coe's artworks with some of them depicting people having picnics near or up against the walls of cattle farms. According to Earth Island Journal, the intense images reveal a society in which mechanized killing and brutalization of the weak by the strong is the norm, as is our willful blindness showing that even when people know of the mistreatment of animals in slaughterhouses, they choose to ignore the problem because these behaviors are either completely normal to them or that people are brutal by nature. Suko mostly uses many shades of black and white in her images to show a society where it is sadly normal to brutally kill animals for not just our food, but for our own monetary gain, and which it can also act as a metaphor for the strong always dominating the weak, with us being blind to it all. She also uses red at times when she wants to throw in a word or a sentence to really give her messages more of a description and weight, though she can be pretty blatant at times when she does this. According to Earth Island Journal, Ko seemingly struggles to find a good artistic balance between using a subtle art style and just flat out screaming her message to everyone, showing that even though she wants to just tell us what really happens in the food industry, she is most effective when she remains silent and just watches us observe her art and we start to question all that we know about the food industry. Suko's goal with her artworks and art style is to challenge what the average person knows about animal cruelty and the food industry as a whole. She depicts people as heartless monsters that know nothing but violence and dominating everything under them. She does this by using some of her artworks that show people as dictators of war and animals as prisoners of war, about to be dragged into concentration camps to be tortured. Her work also makes us feel like a part of the scenes, with how the figures are angled forcing you to look at them, and they display great detail such as with factories being old and filthy, and Canadian slaughterhouses shown to have a somewhat racial look to them. According to Mary Slowick, as an implied artist, Co purportedly has both documentary and expose intentions. The slaughterhouses are hidden from public view, and the narratives are intended to provide carefully observed accounts of her workings meaning that Ko wants to show us what really happens to animals in the food industry from her point of view and for us to question if eating meat is right. In the series Porkopolis, many animals are shown to be hurt badly, put in cramped cages, and having their parts harvested for food. Cows are left bloody with milk pouring out of them, chickens are kept to have their eggs extracted, and lambs are lying on tables dead and alive with parts butchered. Sue Ko, along with her sister Mandy Ko, describe in the Porkopolis pamphlet 
that pigs are active by nature, so by keeping them in cages displaces them in their nature, which can lead them to get sick, die, and cannibalize themselves over time. Also, keeping animals in factories leads to an overproduction of manure which workers have to dump in sewers, polluting the environment as a result. And as Mandy Co puts it, two bushels of topsoil is lost for one bushel of corn produced due to the exploitation of short-term profit in the U.S. Biologists have started to breed more animals with perfect genes that are used to produce food more effectively. This is borderline inhumane because it shows that the food industry is fine with playing with nature just to save on resources. According to Sue and Mandy Co., we fool ourselves if we think that the lab can contain this booming industry. The boundaries have shifted and we find ourselves along with other species, all involved in an ongoing experiment of trial and error, showing that as long as we remain ignorant, industry will always win. Porkopolis also shows off a lot of propaganda aimed towards the government and how they gain more wealth as these bad practices continue. Some examples are a dying goat bleeding money into a rich man's bag and animals pulling boxes with company names on them, showing that animal cruelty keeps the food industry going. The US and English governments appear to be primarily responsible for allowing the food industry to abuse animals just so they can make a profit. Animal advocates called whistleblowers have gone to work at factory farms undercover to record the harm being done to animals on a daily basis. These people seem to be the only way that the public can know about the bad practices of the food industry because of how the government tends to be very secretive about what it does. The government has since introduced the ag ag laws which prevent people from recording inside of slaughterhouses and if these laws are broken, the person would be arrested and unable to speak out against the abuse of animals or give law enforcement actual reasons to investigate the factories, all for trying to save animals in danger. As a result, the government has only made itself look worse in hindsight because it is obvious that they are keeping the practices of the food industry hidden from the public with the ag ag laws, but as long as people like Suko continue to fight the system, animals may be spared more often in the future. There is no escape and Porkopolis are very representational in their art style because of how the animals and people look like they would in real life, helped out by the organic lines and shapes. They are also sometimes abstracted as well because of how the people have cartoony and monstrous proportions in a few of the artworks. The lines in the artworks are also geometric, actual, and implied because of how the machinery and factories are shaped to show how they might work in real life and that the artworks appear to be drawn with pencil or charcoal to give a gritty feel to them. The color that Ko uses is monochromatic with many shades of black and white to convey the gloomy nature of the animal abuse, and white tints to show dim lights in dark areas, and with occasional red to highlight wounds and wording. The value shows a great amount of shading that highlights the buildings, sky, animals, and people that appear in the shadows, and shows chiaroscuro in dark, cloudy, and enclosed spaces with lights slightly pouring in. The texture has a visual feel with how everything looks gritty, dirty, and burnt to express the horror in the artworks. The unity contains the animal cruelty theme in most of Ko's artworks. The spacing is positive and negative with animals and people being front and centered with machines and buildings in the background. There is also atmospheric perspective with how some figures are seen in the distance which overlap as well. The balance is symmetrical with how machines are centered in factories, and asymmetrical with how people and animals are sometimes on opposite sides of each other. There is also alternate rhythm with how groups of animals stand in corners near people, and eccentric rhythm with how people always abuse animals in the artworks. There is always emphasis on people and animals because of their ongoing conflict and that bloody tools and machines are accented to show this. The scale of the figures can vary depending on their distance and significance in the scenes. This is my artwork called Heaven and Hell. The field to the left is where animals are peaceful, and the city to the right is where they will be killed and tossed aside for our food. The man is luring the pigs in for this very purpose, for the good of the city and industry as nature suffers as a result. <laughs>